another group, amen, that will come and celebrate with us, amen, at the 3 o'clock hour, amen. But how many of you know that we can thank God right now? Yeah. Hallelujah. I give God the praise, amen. And I know the Lord is blessing me, uh, blessing us right now, amen, because every time we turn around, he just send new blood into the church. Somebody that's going to help uphold our arms, amen. Those of us that have been working for a long time, amen. How many of you know we need some more help? How many of you thank God for the help that he sent me? Amen. So we just come to acknowledge, amen, those new members, amen, that we have that have joined, that have not received, amen, that new member certificate, amen. And we just want to acknowledge them very quickly here. Amen. We would like for Sister Connie Lasker to come at this time. Amen. Come down and receive. Amen. Y'all been seeing her in the back. But now she's moved to the front. Hallelujah. This one of my fine kids got some praise. God bless you today, Sister Lasker. Stay right there. Amen. Stay right there. Amen. Also, we have today. Brother Raymond Wells. Amen. Sister Rita Matthews. Come on, we got to get your certificate. Hallelujah. To God be the glory. Amen. God has been doing something already in 2020. God bless you, Sister Matthews. Amen. Stand right there. I believe Elder Rice is going to get a picture. Come on, we're on our way. And but the devil. God bless you. Hey, holla. 
Sanctuary Church of God in Christ was officially founded on love in the year of our Lord, February the 6th, 1977, as reported in the Gospel of St. John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever shall believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Since the opening of this great church, many souls have confessed with their mouths the Lord Jesus and believed yes. in their hearts that God has raised him from the dead and is now saved by his blood. There is no secret what God can do. What he has done for others, he'll do for you. In the month of April 1977, the late Superintendent Rochester Rogers Sr. heard the voice of the Lord and completed his first pastorate at the South Warren Church of God in Christ in Warren, Arkansas, and returned home to North Little Rock and began his church ministry. The church started in the home of him and his wife, Mother Leona Mazel, Lewis Rogers, and their three children, Dennis, June, and Thad, and at that time, Mother Rogers was inspecting their fourth child, Rochester Jr. He began having prayer meetings and services at their home on 408 West 21st Street, with the divinely destined seven members. Those members were Mother Rogers, Danny Mays, Jasper Mays, Irma Mays, Geneva Corinthians, Sister Geneva Smith, I'm sorry, Sister Geneva's sister, and their mother. The newly organized Bible Way family soon purchased a small but beautiful church at 502 West 18th Street in North Little Rock, Arkansas. Tremendous progress was made during this stay at this church. Many members were added and that found hope in a new outlook on life and now are making positive contributions to our church and community. The Almighty God had a grand, great blessings for the greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ family. The prophecies of many and the dreams of us all had finally became reality. The Lord blessed us to purchase a new sanctuary directly in front of where we are. We were so excited for God knew he had answered yes. many prayers. Yes. We worship God with the utmost thanksgiving in that new beautiful sanctuary and at the same time we kept humble hearts and souls. However, on September the 6th, I'm sorry, September the 9th, 1991, that supposedly enemy robbed and burned this beautiful edifice. Oh, how our hearts were heavy and hurt. We cried together as a church family, and at the same time, we were yet rejoicing. We knew that God was bottling up all of our tears in order to pour out a mighty blessing in the form of a great miracle. During this time, we worshiped at Shorter College Auditorium faithfully. By continuing to keep faith, in a few days, God moved in a supernatural way. He converted that so-called disaster into a marvelous miracle and moved us to this present complex. We were so humble and grateful God had blessed us. Here today in 2020, new souls have been added. Therefore, we know that this is the year of spiritual growth and stability. We praise God for speaking through our First Lady, Mother, Mother Leona Rogers, who first named our church Bible Way. I let our late pastor, Superintendent Rochester Rogers Sr., named our next home across the street, New Bible Way. And finally, the Lord spoke to Elder Kimbrew to name this present complex the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. The Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ has a God-sent pastor and wife, a loyal and dedicated assistant pastor, a minister staff who are preaching the word of gospel, I'm sorry, preaching the word of God according to his holiness, outstanding administrative assistance, two great choirs that are singing until the power of the Lord come down, right. seasoned deacons with the heart, dedicated and loyal church mothers and missionaries that greet visitors with a smile, and a powerful and productive youth department, and a membership whose hearts are filled with the love of God. Again, the Greater New Bible Way Church family is truly filled with love. The beginning of 2020 indicts a new day, a day of fulfillment of God's joy of purpose in Greater New Bible Way. As a result, we are already experiencing growth in the areas of anointing, anointed power, togetherness, membership, and finances. To God be the glory. Amen. 
We salute our beloved founder, Pastor Superintendent Rochester Rogers Sr., a well-known humanitarian, community, and civic leader for a job well done. We salute our founding mother and First Lady Emeritus, Mother Leona Rogers, who stood by her late husband's side for 36 years and still is standing here faithfully. Yeah. Along with her lovely sons and daughters, in which the eldest is our present pastor in a person of eldest, I'm sorry, Elder Dennis J. Rogers Sr. and his wife, Lady Dora Rogers. May the Lord forever bless and keep Greater New Bible Way Church of God is Christ. Please know the epidemic of glorious success has broken out here. And in Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ, we as a body of baptized believers are united to clam to higher heights. To God be the glory. That the Lord has made. And because this is the day that the Lord has made, we're going to clap our hands and rejoice and be glad in it. Well, this is a day of celebration of 43 years that Greater New Bible Way has been here. This is a day that we're going to celebrate and not forget the founding mother, Mother Leona Rogers, who is yet standing with us. Therefore, we want to give honor and respect to God, first of all, because he is the one that, and the reason why we are able to stand. We want to give honor and respect to Pastor Dennis Rogers, and we want to celebrate and give thanks and acknowledge those who come to help us celebrate. Not just celebrate and just sitting down and watching the service go. But we want to acknowledge those that come to clap their hands. Those that come to stomp their feet. We want to acknowledge those that come to lift up their hands and call on the name of Jesus. We want to acknowledge those that's going to continue to pray for us. Because where there are two or three that are gathered in the name of the Lord, there he will be in the midst of it. So therefore, we want to acknowledge our superintendent of the great North Little Rock District and the first administrative assistant to the bishop of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas, Superintendent Jerome Strickland. And our great missionary, district missionary, Ernestine Strickland. Women of God of North Little Rock, we have ourselves somebody in the North We want to acknowledge Superintendent Robert Robinson. Amen. And I know my friend Lady Robinson is not here, but we became friends some years ago when our daughters were in college. So I certainly want to give honor and respect to her. We want to acknowledge Pastor Brewer and Lady Brewer. Amen. Amen. Great new by the way, get ready for next Saturday because this dynamic district missionary. Amen. Amen. We want to acknowledge, acknowledge Pastor Savage and Lady Savage. Let's give him a good God bless you. Pastor Woods and Lady Woods. Assistant Pastor Brockman. North Little Rock District family, are you in the house today? Pray to by the way. Let's give North Little Rock District a hand praise. Amen, amen. And I believe I've seen some individuals that don't hardly miss a Founders Day, and that is Sister Reddick and Sister Dorothy. Let's give them a good God bless you. Amen, amen. Any other visitors that come help us to celebrate that, that I did not acknowledge you, please stand. Please stand at this time. Amen. I believe we got the acknowledgement done. Let's rock Daniel today.
Amen. My soul cries out, hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. And the praise shall continue, man. For the three years. Yes. Are you happy? Are you excited? Yes. Well, who gets all the glory for bringing the Bible up? Yes. God gets it all. Yes. And I wish everybody would just stand on your feet for just a moment. Everybody in here stand on your feet. When I count to three, I want you to shout to God be the glory for this ministry. Looking on the past, looking at the present, and looking to the future, we want to give God a shout of thanksgiving and praise for this ministry. And this praise that you do, I don't want you to do it lightly. I want you to get into the holies and holies right now for the Greater New Bible Way. Go in there for just a moment and and uh, give God praise. And this praise is going to be a time-binding praise. Yes, right. What kind of praise? Time-binding time praise. What is time-binding? When you look to the past and look to the future, All right. and make one step in the present, whereas it has taken others a lifetime to make. Listen, it has not been told what God is going to do through yes, new Greater New Bible Way. And when we enter into that praise, you're going to get shout to God be the glory as loud as you can. And I want you to just clap your hands and give God thanks for this ministry. Well, I didn't say do it yet. But you got to do it. We're going to do it. We're going to lift up praise in this building. Come on. One, two, three. Shout. Superintendent Jerome Strickland and, and uh, Superintendent Rochester Rogers. When we got ready to start the Charles Harrison Mason Bible College, and we had a connection with the University of Arkansas, and uh, I guess not Bible College, but it was a Charles Harrison Mason Institute. And we made connection with the University of Arkansas at Little Rock. And then we had a range at participant was able to receive continuing education, continuing education credit through the university system. And Superintendent Rogers came into the meeting, so we had some teachers, uh, they didn't all have the background for his academics and Superintendent Rogers. He said, now first of all, we got to require of all these teachers, I want to see a copy of their syllabus. <laughs> Somebody said, what is that? <laughs> He's going to be one of the teachers. That's the only person working in the superintendent. And, uh, but, but he called, he said, no, Bishop Linden said, no, we got to have Rochester. Amen. That's what he said, Rochester, to the table. 
And then he was teaching at Arkansas Baptist College then. But I go back before then. I remember in Warren, Arkansas, yes. when Superintendent Rogers invited me down as a young boy preacher to come and preach at South Warren, yes. Church of God in Christ. Yes. But how do you determine the difference between a God-ordained denomination and one that people just inspired and has inspiration and they started it? Come on, sir. People who study religion, they oftentimes look, what will happen after the leader has passed? They used to talk about Bishop Charles Harrison Mason. I remember back in those days, and there was another preacher named A. Allen. And they were both about there, two powerful people in the U.S., evangelists. And they would say Bishop Charles Harrison Mason and Reverend A. Allen. Anybody ever heard of Reverend A.E. Allen? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some of y'all too young. Yes, he had so much going on until they changed the whole city name after him. And they called it Miracle Valley, Arizona. Because that was the headquarters for A.E. Allen revival. He would come to town and with his major tent revivals. And, and uh, you, you had a senior capacity uh, Maybe, I don't know, it may have been eight, five, ten, I don't know, but it's a big ten. And so, uh, it was just awesome. But you know, A. Allen passed. And then you go to Miracle Valley, there's no A. Allen connection at all there. But there is still a Bishop Charles Harrison Mason, Church of God in Christ, that God established. So therefore, those who study religion will say that, since the Church of God in Christ is still living, you didn't have just a religious sect. You had a God-given denomination. Yeah. 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 By the way, you didn't start just as a religious sect. For 43 years, you are still here. Yeah. Pastor Rogers, Sister Rogers called in, but you are still here. Yeah. Now, there is a there is a spirit that's upon this church, the Spirit of God, of course, but then there is something about when you see members from New Bible Way are the same type of members in, in the characteristic that you will sense under the leadership of Bishop, uh, not Bishop, but under Rochester Rogers. When you see people from this church then, and, and I still sense it now because Pastor Dennis Rogers has that same spirit resting yes, upon sir. him, but he's unique. He's unique in his calling. And see, the problem with some of us, we want everybody to be just like somebody else. But he, he doesn't need to be just like Rochester Rogers. He needs to be like Dennis Rogers. Because God is saying it's time for another level. Because Rochester served the time then. But now God has said, I'm doing a new thing. I'm doing a new thing through Dennis Rogers. And so, people from this church... I always check them out. They, they didn't mind being corrected. Right. Second thing about them, they, they, there was a sense of calmness about them. Yes. I've never seen Elder Rochester in any kind of meeting that you got him upset and, and he lost his cool. I, I don't think the man ever got upset. I don't care how heated or simple would get, Rochester, he was always calm. And then the third thing is a level of clarity. And that's what church life ought to be about, all of us. Does your church uh, bring about, uh, do you allow your church to correct you? To calm you down? And to bring clarity to your life? That's what church should be all about. And then there's a, there's a ministry that New Bible Way is big on. And it's been ever since the life of Susan Rochester Rogers. It's a ministry that we don't talk much about. We big on all these other ministries. But when it comes to this particular ministry, you skip it a whole lot of times. And that is a ministry of helps. Praise God for a greater new Bible way. Defining, redefining what it really means. Ministry of Helps. 
and somebody say this on our condemn, what does it mean? Having enough loving people yes. serving. Yes. Having enough loving people serving. Yes. That's what we need more of in the kingdom. Yes. And the Bible way, some of us, Pastor Dennis Rogers, while we uh, are struggling for church clout, you got kingdom clout. And I'd rather really have kingdom cloud over the church cloud. Amen. 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 God is such an awesome God. Yes, he is. He's good. I can't tell you what he's done for you, but I can tell you that he's shown been good to me. God is an awesome God. As I was sitting back reflecting on, on, on so much, so many years in the uh, military heights community. I consider it a blessing to be in God's house. Because he is so good. And we are so not worthy of all that he's done for us. So first giving honor to God. Because he deserves all of our praise. Not some of our praise. Pastor Dennis Rogers, the entire greater New Bible Way Baptist Church family, Church of God in Christ, sorry. <laughs> oh, heaven's holiday break. <laughs> I bring you greetings from the Mount Pleasant Baptist Church. <laughs> to Superintendent Strickland, all the special guests and friends that come together this afternoon to celebrate just how far God has brought this body of believers. 43 years. 43 years is a long time. You know, there's an old saying, and I think one of the preachers said it earlier. If you don't know where you come from, it's hard to know where you're going. And so it's a good day to reflect and to celebrate. Because I know some people say, ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party. Because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. And we're inviting the Holy Spirit to come in this place as we celebrate. And right now I want to celebrate this woman of God, Mother Leona Rock. that went about mother. And it says, the M is for the million things that you gave me. O means that, yeah, you're growing old. T is for the tears she shed to save me. H is for the heart of purest gold. E is for her eyes with love light shining. R means right and right shall always be. When you put them together, they spell mother. A word that always means the world to me. You know, when Jane June called me to give a tribute to her mom, I was in awe because I felt doubly honored to be given this task. I began to think, and I thought, and I was beginning to say, what could I say? about such a great woman of God. I even went to the website of Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ and I read the history. I read that this body of believers was birthed mm -hmm, by the late Rochester Rogers and First Lady Mother Leona Rogers. February the 6th, 1977. And our Lord is Jesus, Savior Jesus Christ. He laid the foundation for this church. Yes. You know, in Matthew 22, 37 through 39, it says, Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart yes. and with all your soul yes. and with all your mind. Yes. This is the greatest commandment. And the second is like this. Love the neighbor as yourself. Yes. Yes. Mm. Ain't nothing like love. 
Now I'm talking about real love. You know, I ain't talking about that artificial stuff. I'm talking about that genuine love. And today I salute Mother Leona Rogers for being a lover in a home to her husband, to her children, to her family, her workplace, her community, and her church. She demonstrated her love into action. You might have thought she was from Missouri because that's the show me state. But she put that love into action. You know, as I was thinking, I was remember when I was a little girl and I attended Carter G. Woodson Elementary. That school no longer exists. It was a black elementary. And one of the teachers, I didn't have him as a teacher, but you would have thought I did, was Rochester Rogers. And every day I would pass his room and he'd say, Deborah Faye Lou, did you bring me a sandwich today? <laughs> you all know the Reverend Rogers, he loves me. So every day I would have my mom, mom, fix me an extra sandwich. I got to take it to Mr. Rogers. So that's how he was. They were just like family. And I was listening today of the history. And they said the first church was organized at 408 West 21st Street. Well, guess what? My address was 408 West 23rd Street in the Military Heights. The Rogers have been just like family. If you didn't know the Military Heights, you missed out on a blessing. We were all family. When the kids went out to play, everybody watched. And one did something that they shouldn't do, everybody told. We were like family down through the years. And I remember later on, it's Miss Rogers. She was the cafeteria manager at one of the local schools. And every day, my daughters, they would come home, and they would talk about the conversation and the warm smile and the hot, good rolls that she made and uh, how she demonstrated that love and concern to all the students that came her way. Her smile was almost melting like butter. That's the kind of person that Miss Rogers is. A songwriter says that, um, give me my flowers while I yet live. What good are the flowers while I lay? Give her her flowers today. And today I wanted to stop by and just salute Mother Rogers on this Founders Day just for being you. For praising the Lord in all that you do. I know that you've had us in other times down. But through it all, thank God, there's been a praise all around. To work for the Lord, it's sure enough has its reward. But I say to you today, stay on the battlefield with the Bible as your sword. And I pray for renewed strength. As the days and weeks go by, because he can do the impossible as he sits up on high. I am grateful to know such an anointed woman of God, one who is tall in his vineyard with a smile in the eyes. Gratefulness is the words of the song, and if you know it too, in your mind, sing along. It says, I'm grateful for the things that you have done. I am grateful for the victories you have won. I can go on and on and on about your word. Because I'm grateful, grateful, so grateful just to praise you, Lord. Christ will last. Yeah. I 
on today. Also, uh, one of our members, Sister Fanny Pinky, should not, not be here today, could not be here, and she sent her love offering as well. And I felt it was right to acknowledge her. Praise the Lord for the other churches. Brother DJ will be in the back doing credit cards. Sanctify yeah. hands together one more time. Come on, if you love God, come on, bless the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord in this house. Amen. This is a day of celebration. Amen. This is a day of excitement. This is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. And I shall rejoice and be glad therein. God bless you. We thank God for that that you have done by the way of giving. Thank you for your liberality in your giving. Amen. This church family appreciates every gift. Regardless of how great or how small, we thank God for your gift of love. Amen. Because we realize you don't have to do what you do. But it's out of the goodness of your heart and we're, uh, we're glad. Is that right, Greater New Bible Way? Can we thank God, amen, for those that come to celebrate? Amen, amen. I am just grateful right now, amen, as we get ready to move to the next part of this service. Amen, I'm so honored, I'm so delighted, amen, I'm excited. Amen, if I had a few more adjectives, I'll stop right there. Thank God, amen, amen. Yeah, my father would make up a few amen and tell you, amen, but I'm not him, amen, so I'm going to stick with what I know. Is that all right? Yeah. To God be the glory, amen. We're just so happy, amen, to have, amen, our district family here with us on today. I, I was telling them when we were getting ready to plan this, amen, we're just going to make this a family affair. Is that all right, North Carolina district? This is a family affair on today. Amen. All of the North Little Rock District churches, amen, coming together yes, on today. Sir. And a few guests. And so we thank you for coming to be a part of this wonderful service. Amen. We're getting ready now for the word of God. Yes. Y'all not as excited as I am. I say this word time right about now. I wish I could get a thunderous amen applause on that. It's word time now. Is there anybody on the drum? Amen. Amen. I want to make some thunderous applause. Amen. I need to hear a beat. Amen. A cymbal, a, a, a bass, or something. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. I'm so happy. Amen. I'm not going to do the formal. Amen. Amen. Present presentation. Amen. But I thank God that when I called upon my superintendent, amen, he said yes. Amen. We're just excited. We thank God for the leadership of this just district. Amen. And all of those, amen, that help make this district what it is. Certainly thank God, amen, for our district missionary. Amen. Thank God to all of you. Amen. And to our special guest, St. Matthew. St. Matthew is in the house on today. Amen. So we appreciate you. We thank God for all of you that are here. Amen. But to further introduce, amen, our speaker on today. Amen. We have asked, amen, the elder D. Whit Brockman. Amen. If he would come. Amen. Will you put your hands together, amen, and receive Elder Brockman as he comes. Amen. Put those hands together for the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're so glad to be here in the house of the Lord. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Amen. And I'm here to do something that's easy for me. All right, sir. Because I do it every Sunday. All right, sir. And I'm, my pastor, I thank God for him because he is a builder, first of all. all right. Not only will he build a physical building, but he builds spiritual buildings. Amen. I thank God for the church that we have now. Amen. It's 10,000 square feet sitting on 3.52 acres. Amen. And Pastor Strickland, when you tell him no, you better watch out because he's coming. Because he fought and he fought and he fought until we got to that point. Amen. He built a church before that in Russellville, Arkansas. Faith Temple Church of God in Christ. So he is a builder of buildings, but I also say he's a builder of me. Amen. I thank God 
for how he has uh, watched over his preachers and ministers and missionaries at the St. Matthew Church of God in Christ. Giving us opportunities to, to minister and to, to do the things that we need to do to develop, amen, to be the women and men uh, of God that we're supposed to be. Come on now, give him a hand. Amen. But let me tell you something about it. Amen. You know we always hear people say he's somebody's preacher. Well, he's everybody's preacher. Amen. And we thank God for the anointing that God has given him. Amen. The direction that he's given him. Amen. And I tell you what, I thank God for the people because they follow him. Amen. I'm introducing to some and presenting to others tonight or today. Amen. The pastor of the St. Matthew Church of God in Christ. My Lord is Jerome.
God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. These executive leaders, we lift before the throne of grace and the household of faith, the people of God, in Jesus' name. May the blessings and the anointing of God ever be upon you and the work and all that he put your hands to do. And the people of the Lord said again to God, to God. to come and encourage the people of the Lord. My respect to Superintendent Robinson, and amen, Pastor Brewer, Pastor Savage, Pastor Woods, to Elder Brockman, who so wonderfully presented us on today. Thank you, Elder Brockman. Amen, to our one and only great district missionary, the greatest all district missionary, the greatest one I ever had. Thank you, missionaries. Great plan. This missionary Brewer and all the elect ladies. Amen. To all, to the assistant pastor of this great church, Elder White, and to the administrative assistants, officers, and members, and amen. Also to one of the great families, to the greatest church family. Amen. For Brother Strickland, amen, the St. Matthew family, I would, that they would stand because they have come to support. Not only great and new Bible way, but to support your leader, your uncle servant as well. Thank you, St. Matthew. Thank you. Thank you. Amen. I would like for the elders to remain standing because they certainly undergird the ministry here. Amen. Elder Murphy, you can stand, Elder Murphy. Amen. He's our adjutant, Elder Murphy. Amen. And uh, he's a little bit bigger than I am. So, so if you want a piece of me, you got to get through him first. Amen. And uh, from St. Matthew, thank you, uh, Elder Murphy, Dr. Owa, who brought a great message on today. Amen. Elder Flowers, Elder Brown, praise the Lord. Elder Brockman, Minister Strickland, uh, he's on the organ. Uh, uh, he was on the organ. Amen. Elder Starks, thank you. Praise the Lord. These great and wonderful leaders. Amen. And thank you, Brother uh, Oscar Myers, who serves as our armor bearer. Our deacons and evangelist missionaries, thank you. Praise God for sharing today. Chairmen of our deacon ministry, Deacon Thompson, Deacon Roundtree. Amen. And we're just so happy and thrilled that the Lord allowed each and every one of you to come and, and be a part of this setting. And my praise and thanksgiving to all the district officials that have come. Or rather, the, as well, the jurisdictional officials. We're here to do business for the master. But the Bible declares in 1 John, for this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Amen. So today we are here, amen, to do, amen, according to the word of the Lord. Just for a few moments Today, and I, and certainly I thank the Lord for my uh, natural family as well. Yes. They are here. They are here. Praise the Lord. I like for them to stand. Some might be asleep. No, they're, they're up now. Yes. Amen. Praise the Lord. I like for them to stand. They're here. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, amen, for sharing today. There is a word that I would like to share with you uh, briefly on today. Praise the Lord. And I would that you would turn with me initially to the book of Isaiah. To the book of Isaiah. Praise the Lord. There's a word there we would like to share with you on today. Amen. The book of Isaiah. And that is found in the book of Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4. It is the verse parallel to our uh, theme scripture today, uh, 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. 
But Isaiah 64 and 4 declares, For since the beginning of the world, men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, neither hath the eye seen, O God, beside thee, what he had prepared for him that waited for him. And then we're going to slip over to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But let's begin with verse 5. And if you will listen, please, I'm going to conclude with verse 10. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world, that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. That eighth verse of the second chapter of 1 Corinthians declares, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Amen. But it, as it is written, I has not seen, right. nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God yes. has prepared for them yes. that love him. Right. But God, come on, say, but God. But God. <laughs> but God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Lord Jesus, bless your people now. And let these words become a part of our lives. For it's by the word we live, we move, and we have our being. And when we leave this place, we will leave in courage. And with a positive attitude to live for you in a day, in a time like this. In Jesus' name. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. God bless. Thank you, Amen, for standing. The best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. Shall come to repentance. Yeah. That's the breath limit. 
and uh, with uh, the word, the love of God. Yes. Isaiah was right at a time where God's nation, God's chosen nation, had drifted away from him and were following the, the worship of uh, uh, deities and engaging in pagan, uh, pagan rituals. But there was nevertheless a little remnant that was faithful to the Lord. So Isaiah began to encourage them, amen, that the Lord, the Messiah, was coming. And of the many blessings that he had in store for them. In other words, he would tell them, just hold on a little while longer. The best is yet to come. And without a doubt, Paul speaks in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 to the note the happiness that results from, from a spiritual and relational fellowship we have with Christ through the gospel. Yes, sir. I'm not talking about joining the church building. <laughs> oh, let me encourage you today. Great new Bible way. I'm not talking about joining the church building. I'm talking about joining the body of Christ. I'm talking about having a spiritual relationship. Amen. With the Lord himself. There are one of the people that are really missing. They're missing it. They know the 23rd Psalm. But they don't know the shepherd of the Son. My supposition is this that this application of 1 Corinthians 2 and 9 right. parallel to Isaiah 64 and 4 uh -huh. should be applied not only to the mysterious wisdom of God Hallelujah. and to the present glories and promises well. uh -huh, of a life in Christ yes. right now but also as well to the future life of the believer yes. in Christ Jesus in heaven yes. Yes. that I has not seen. This is the same thing as saying no one has ever fully perceived and understood the value and the beauty of things that God has prepared for his people. I know we're enjoying some beautiful things and wonderful things today. Amen. But the eye has not seen what God has in store for his people. Neither has any into the heart of man. No man has been able to conceive it. The thing that God has prepared. The thing that God has held in reserve. Amen. It makes me think about this, uh, this GPS we got now. And this Google map. Uh-huh. Some folks don't want me to know where they live. I said, but just give me your name. <laughs> uh huh. And I can type in on Google and visit the street you live on and put that little man on that map and turn him around and see your house. Whether or not you cut your grass. <laughs>
We remain prepared for another. The way, amen, praise God, may the live God might suffer some persecution. But just hold on a little while longer. And I can tell you today the mysteries that are hidden in God's word. They speak of the unsearchable riches in Christ. The world cannot see what we see. The world cannot feel what we feel, nor understand what we understand. Because it's only revealed by the Spirit of God. That's why I'm not aware about the hypocrite in the church. Amen. I'm not aware about the backslide of those that have already committed their life. I'm aware about this. Amen. No man, no sign. You know why? Because, praise God, God will do the dividing. God will do the dividing. And when God gives you a word, a revelation of his word, that's why some folks can't understand it. Amen. When God gives you an insight into his word, praise God, the unbeliever, the unregenerated man, cannot understand the things of God. And Paul said in Romans, because the carnal mind is an image head with God. It cannot understand the things of God. And this is why it's necessary that if we gonna undergird pastor in later Rogers, amen, we got to be in line with the spirit of God. Amen. Don't I know you can sing, but Praise God, but well, don't start singing until you receive the Holy Ghost. I know you can teach the word, but don't start teaching in, in the Bible and Sunday school until you get the Holy Ghost. I know you can usher real good and you've been doing it for a long time, but don't start until you get the Holy Ghost. Amen, because the Holy Ghost will give you insight. The Holy Ghost will give you to be able to, to see that depth. See that devil coming, amen. Before you get here, amen. Praise God. And, and you're going to run into things. Uh huh. Amen. The best is yet to come. Amen. Praise God. But we need the Holy Ghost. We need the power. The power of God so we can understand the mind and will of God. Yes, yes sir. Oh, now, somebody said what God has in store. Where God in his grace has revealed to us that he has prepared amazing and wonderful things. Yes. For those that love and trust him. Yes. And indeed, Jesus himself said that he was going to prepare a place for you. Amen. That in his father's house. Yes, That's how he said, in my father's yes, house. Sir. But we do not know yes. what wonderful things are being prepared in the house. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. That makes me think about John. Uh-huh. Amen. In Revelation. Uh-huh, look at Revelation 21. Yes. Let me look yes, over sir. here. Well, Revelation 21. Yes. Amen. Now John <laughs> was doing the best he could yes. because of his limited knowledge and understanding. So to the best of his intellectual being, <laughs> John wrote down what he saw. Uh-huh, in that 21st chapter of Revelation. Uh-huh, come on, it said the best is yet to come. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, in that 10th verse, John said, he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, show me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God and her light were like unto a stone most Precious. And John said, even like a jasper, just like a jasper stone, a clear as crystal. And the 12th verse said, it had a wall great and high, had 12 gates, and at the gate, 12 angels. Names were written thereon, which were the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. 
On the east, there were three gates. And on the north, three gates. And on the south, three gates. And on the west, three gates. And the walls of the city had 12 foundations. Help me, Holy Ghost. In them. Ah, uh, the best is yet to come. Uh huh. Yeah, on the south, three gates. And on the west, three. In the 14th verse, in the wall of the city, 12 foundations. In them, the name of the 12 apostles. Of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city. And the gates thereof, and the wall thereof, and the city lad lies at four square. The length is as large as the breadth. He measured the city with the reed and 12,000 furlongs. I'm going to come back to this one. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall. 144 uh, and four cubits according to the measure of a man. That is all uh, the angel. And the building of the wall was of jasper. And the city was pure gold. Uh huh. And two clear glass. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. It tells me, John was trying to tell me. <laughs> Amen. That, uh, this, uh, this is a fabulous place. Uh huh. And John said there was 12 gates. Uh huh. Well, mean divine government. Come on, say divine, divine, divine. Uh huh. And verse 16 said, it was as wild uh -huh, uh, as it was low. Uh huh. And, and, as, and, and the saying, it was just as high as it was wild. Uh huh. 12,000 furlongs. Uh huh. And they said, that's about 1,000. 500 miles. 1,500. 1,500. 1,500 miles. Amen. They estimated that that contains about 600,000 stories. Oh my God. Amen. And that means that there's room for you. There's room for you. And room for you. And, and is there anybody here that been to a five-star hotel? Uh -huh. And you know, you said, man, look at me. Praise God, I'm in a five-star hotel. But tell that neighbor, you haven't seen nothing yet. Amen. City called Jerusalem. Amen. Praise God. There's no limit to what God has in store. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Paul was talking about Jesus. And my Bible says, Amen. That God has in store some great blessing for the people of God. So, what I want you to do. <laughs> what I want you to do greater than a new Bible way. I want you to stay in the press. Amen. We're successfully climbing. But we can't stop now. Somebody have got an ease and sign. Oh my God. Because we came from Bible way to new Bible way. To greater new Bible way. But some folks got this Moses spirit. Oh, what you talking about Moses spirit? Uh-huh. They got this Moses spirit. Where Moses said, the Lord said unto Moses. Uh-huh. Wherefore uh, are you crying out to me? Uh, uh, speak to the children of Israel. And tell the children of Israel, go follow. Come on and tell their neighbor, go follow. Amen. The word, the word came. The word came when Israel was healed up on all sides. Mountain on every side. Amen. The Red Sea was lying before him. Pharaoh and army was behind him trying to kill him. But God told Moses, quit your crying. Pull yourself together and go fight in the word of the Lord. Come and tell our thank you. Some of them may not have Moses' spirit, but they have the Jeremiah syndrome. Yeah, 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 Jeremiah syndrome. Where Jeremiah said, Oh Lord, behold, I cannot speak. 
I am a child. Uh, Jeremiah 1 and 6. Have you ever said love flows because God is in control? A church where God is really real? Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday.